terrible service. Apathetic staff was served a cheeseburger already half eaten by another diner. Worst restroom in New York. Welcome once again to 366 Weird Movies Pod 366 Supplementary, The Weird View Crew, where we uh, view movies to see if they belong on our list of the weirdest movies ever made. Today is uh, both a reader suggestion and a personal pick favorite of mine. I think it's about time we finally got around to this one. Uh, <laughs> after my last review, Rock and Roll Frankenstein, after I got done heaving into the barf bag about it, I figured I could pick a palate cleanser this time. So we have a good movie about bad people. Not only is this my strong recommendation for the list, but it also makes me wondering, why isn't this a cult classic? Especially a movie loaded with so many meme-worthy lines. But even from a basic level, I just don't think I'm a money person. I mean, that's what I figure it resolves to, you know? What do I care about your basic level? I am a money person and you owe me money! And I hit the razor machine, I hit the gumball machine, I hit the peanut machine, everything, you know? That's what I'm going to do to you if you don't shut up! Mrs. Aiken, the um, hair in my nose is growing back again. I know it's not your fault, it's my nose. I mean, I just thought I'd mention it. As it is, this makes for a masterclass on making a great weird movie. Andy Warhol's bad. A few warnings going forward. Uh, we're going to try to spoil as little as possible because this movie is best seen going in cold. If you haven't seen it and you want to, it's really better if you just go into it. It's a full experience all on its own. And a trigger warning for violence and murder and mayhem, especially quite a bit of it depicted towards children. So if you have trigger issues towards there, maybe give it a skip. If you're a little bit sensitive, in fact, this movie is not for the soft-hearted, okay? It's a pitch-black dark comedy that's uh, basically about a den of assassins living in New York. Now, this movie has at least one scene that can make anyone flinch. For me, I'm a germaphobe, of course, me and Howie Mandel both. For me, it's when LT grabs pills out of a flushing toilet and gulps them down without even drying them off. How to make a great weird movie, step one. Be produced by an off-center genius like Andy Warhol. Now, granted, Andy Warhol is seen today as possibly the kiss of the art world, a little bit more commercial business than he was artist, but he did give us, after all, the Velvet Underground. And, of course, as an old punk rocker, <laughs> I say that name with a special reverence, not to mention the exploding plastic inevitable smell of this book. Uh, let's start with the soundtrack. According to actress Tara Tariba, the late Lou Reed, Velvet Underground frontman, was reportedly jumping to do the soundtrack. Warhol went with Michael Bloomfield based on Turbo's recommend. I'd say he was an excellent choice too, even though I'm kind of curious to see, hear how uh, Lou Reed would have interpreted it. But Mike Bloomfield's greatest claim to fame is as a member of Bob Dylan's original band. Uh, along with fellow Dylan alumni Al Cooper, he made Super Session, that album in the 1968. Okay, enough on the soundtrack. I'm a music geek. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Bad is one of those movies that uh, it's not going to be very easy to explain by plot as much as going by characters, so I'll skip the plot blow by blow for the most part. A master class in making great weird movies. Have a gallery of oddball characters. Our anti-heroine is Hazel Aiken, played by Carol Baker. She runs an electrolysis parlor out of her New York kitchen. Aw, she's working from home. And she also runs an all-girl hit squad. Oh. Yes, just like an early prototype of Fox Force 5. Hazel Aiken is the ramrod matron head of the unhappy Aiken household. A cold-blooded taskmaster with a cash register for her. Yet she gets more fascinating as the narrative piles on layers to her character. She'll tolerate murder, but she's anti-drugs and won't even possess stolen property. She's shown wearing her luxurious fur coats and jewelry, but only in the privacy of her own bedroom. She lets no one else see it. Later, it hits you. Except for one scene, Hazel hardly ever leaves the house. When a crooked cop shakes her down, she's a cornered rat. In the end, everybody in this concrete jungle is either prey or predator. Look, I hope you know no drugs in this house. This is no place to get sloppy. And you'll pay your rent from your share of the 10000 which will be half. Just so you understand that. That's a hell of a cat you're taking. Well, I've got a lot of overhead. She plays all this like Nurse Ratched from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest quit med school to join the Mafia instead. 
Vivian Vance was Andy Warhol's first choice to play Hazel Aiken. According to WarholStars.org, Vivian Vance thought differently. I'd love to do it, Andy. Really, I would, she told us over dinner at La Caravelle. But you must understand that for all those people there, I'm still Ethel Mertz, Lucy's next-door neighbor and the nicest woman in America. And that's why I can't still go to any dinner theater in the country and get paid 20 grand a week, because all my nice fans and their mink stoles want to see Ethel Mertz be nice. I hate being nice, and I hate my fans, and I hate their mink stoles. But I love making 20 grand a week anytime I want. Vivian Vance, Zero Chill. Next, we have Mary Aiken, Hazel's sister-in-law, and you know her as Susan Tyrell, whom you know as the queen of the fifth dimension from Forbidden Zone, our list pick, and again, one of my top ten favorite weird movies. Tyrell picked up a Saturn Award as Best Supporting Actress for this performance, and she earned it. Mary is a single mom on welfare. Hazel takes her whole check every month, so she's just stuck at home taking care of the baby. Mary is the heart and soul of the movie, being the only character with a drop of empathy. You really look like a witch. Look at your hair. Ah, spray it. <laughs> so, of course, everybody picks on her. Even when they do something nice for Mary, such as taking her out to the movies, she ends up just being insulted and dumped. Should I get in the back seat? Poor Mary. Your heart just breaks for her. Susan Tyrell plays Mary as a fully broken spirit, to the point where she cowers timidly when somebody offers her a crumb of comfort. She's like a whipped dog. Enter LT like Prince Ali upon his flying magic carpet, stealing a ride on a bus. You would say Rogue is charm, but he's more like an urban punk. He steals candy from the store, helps himself to the mail, ransacks rooms when nobody's there, and darn near robs the house blind. It's Perry King's razor-sharp acting skills that pull this character off as a true neutral crook. Uh, Mrs. Aiken? Yes. Cece called you about me. You're early. I've got a client here. Well, don't worry about it. Why did you bring luggage? Look, maybe Cece told you that occasionally I let a girl stay here while I'm opening the channels between her and a client, but that's in very special situations. This is special? Well, we've only got one bathroom. It couldn't hold another person. Can I just wait in here? Hey. Into this cobra's nest of crime wanders professional drifter LT, played by Perry King. LT comes recommended for a hit job, but Hazel is hesitant to trust a man to do the woman's work of murder. A little upset that you aren't a woman. What can I say? I just thought a woman would be more understanding about what I want. Uh, do we have your number here? You don't need it. Give me your name. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, LT. LT simply moves into the household like a stray cat, helping himself in a series of petty thefts and burglaries. He even helps himself to PG in a bedroom scene that's dripping with apathy. Honestly, when it comes to the hit gal squad, it's hard to keep them straight. For one thing, they all plop on wigs interchangeably. I know where that is. Uh, he works until 10. He's alone there after 8. There's an IRT subway stop right exactly in front of the place, almost by the pumps. I want you to wait there and follow him down into the subway when you see a train coming. I want you to shove him real hard onto the track. I believe there's an A-team of RC... Sorinda Fox, and P.G. Stephanie Cassini. You back already? Must have been a real quickie, huh? A real shorty? Oh, she wanted me to get rid of her baby. And then to save the money, she chucked it out the window herself, the bitch. Oh, no! No, no, no! I can't stand it anymore! Don't cry, Mary. I'll get another job tomorrow. And then we have a B-team, Glenda and Marcia, who are like the Laverne and Shirley of Murder Incorporated, as I've seen another reviewer put it. Are you Estelle? I didn't ask her for two of you. We're a sister act. Don't worry about it. Big deal. Uh, they botch a dog job, steal a car, and then set, f set the car on fire while driving it. You started a fire. Are you crazy? Stupid idiot. Did I mention this movie's pretty fast-paced? As for the story, eh, a crooked cop is putting pressure on Hazel. 
She's been paying him extortion money, but he wants a collar now, demanding Hazel sacrifice an assassin for him to arrest. Hazel stalls him for as long as possible, but her time is running out. Outside of that, it's all a pretty plotless story. Various hits are carried out to varying degrees of success, particularly against children. Report. Just consider it euthanasia. You know, a retraction. As I said, he is autistic, so I'll call you. All right? Right. It seems a lot of parents in New York want an extreme late-term abortion. At least the parents in 2017's mom and dad had the guts to murder their own children. Other patrons of Hazel's hit squad are just lousy people settling petty beefs, including this gal, who hires them to kill her neighbor's dog just because he insulted her. What do you want us to do? You've got to kill a dog, and you've got to kill it viciously. I mean, it can't be something painless or ouchless. One of these? Of course not. Why would I want one of my own babies killed? This is mommy, and these are her two babies. Oza, oza, oza. I know this is a movie that's going to divide a lot of people, but I love Andy Warhol's Bad. Andy Warhol's Bad is a pitch black dark comedy. It was shocking and provocative when it came out, but now many a movie has based its premise where Bad first dared to tread. Nowadays, dead baby comedy is old hat. Other black comedies that pair well with Bad include Man Bites Dog, Little Murders, and Eating Raul. But Bad did it all badder and did it campier. I can't stand watching you sit around here all day, talking to your shrink on the phone, and reading liner notes off of 1965 Dylan album. I mean, what do you have to talk to him about anyway? You don't do anything. I'd say it's worth rewatch value. Not only is it now a time capsule of Queens in the 1970s and all its seedy glory, but it does have something to say about the local social landscape of the 1970s, too. It's not the most expensive movie ever shot, and some of the performances are just flat in this trashy world, but it still plays like an Alfred Hitchcock episode if Hitchcock was somehow forced to work with John Waters on a Roger Corman budget. And even if the film's premise is cold-hearted, the violence is not at all bloody or gory. A few reviews out there have observed over the years that this movie actually takes a very moralistic stance and has some things to say about how we structure our society. No! I'm not! It's true! I know about it! I know about it too, miss. If you want to know something, you got too much anxiety. Children are a constant focus of violence and abuse in this movie, making it work as a moralistic condemnation of the baby boomers' utter indifference to the next generation. Between that and the constant references to welfare and food stamps, it's hard not to pick out some social, co social commentary. So without spoiling too much, I'll give you this little hint. You may end up liking some of these characters just a bit more than you would first expect. By the time we get to the ending, you might even appreciate the final acts of the film as an appropriate place to stop, for after all, all of these lives have been... Oh, Delta New position in the jungle food chain, shall we say. Such is the fate of bad people. Bad was the last movie that Andy Warhol produced, one of his biggest budgets. It's high time that this movie got the respect that is due. Were it to be honored on the list, it's even bucking for a place in my top ten favorite weird movies of all time. I realize this movie isn't for everyone, so if you treat my recommend as me being partial to dark comedy... Gosh, whatever gave you that idea. What kind of grandmother are you? Having baby killers in the house with a baby? She kill any baby. She would not. She only does what she's paid to do. I say it's a good time to be a fan of bad.